In this video, we're going to learn about the new Blend Curve tool in Fusion 360, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to dive into the newly added Blend Curve tool in Fusion 360. This showed up after the April 2023 update just the day ago, and I want to talk about this tool because we haven't really seen very many additions to the sketching workspace in Fusion 360. So I want to talk about what the tool does, how to use it, when to use it, and maybe why to use it. So if you want to learn just the basics of what this tool does, I'm going to cover that first in this video, and then I'm going to dive a bit deeper into some of the nuances that I've seen with this tool in just the past day of playing around with it. So to get started, the first thing that we want to do is in a 2D sketch, I'm just going to go ahead and create some curves that I want to connect with a spline. I'm going to make some adjustments and some manipulations here. Basically what I'm looking for is I want to build a curve between these two, and then I want to evaluate what the tool does. I'm going to make a couple copies because we are going to be going into this a little bit deeper after I cover the basics. So I want four copies of this. That way I can sort of go over how I would do this traditionally before this tool and what some of those differences look like. Then just to make sure nothing moves and that everything is the same, I'm going to fix them in space so that way nothing is going to change. So now let's talk about how to use the tool and what it actually does. When you select Blend Curve, you have two options. You have Tangent and you have Curvature. These are the tangent constraints that we see up here and the curvature constraint that we see on the far right. There is a slight difference here that we will get into later on in the video, but just note at this time, you need to pre-select which constraint you want to use. So I'm going to do one with tangent, and then I'm going to set it to curvature, and I'm going to do the same thing, noting that we get a different result. Now at the base of this, what you're getting is a fit point spline with those constraints already applied. Just like a fit point spline, you can right click on it and you can insert a spline point to add more control and manipulate the geometry. You'll notice that right now, it looks like it's fully defined. We are able to manipulate these handles, but when you first apply it, it does give you a fully defined spline in this case. Now there are some other applications. For example, if you have some surfaces, and these are kind of tiny here, but if you have some surfaces and you do the same thing, even though this is a 2D sketch, it is able to build those in 3D with both the tangency and the curvature continuity for you. This automatically includes the 3D edge of your selection and builds the spline in 3D for you. So you can see that there are some great applications for us to basically build these curves in 3D very quickly and easily using just a couple clicks. Now that's the basic look at it. If you wanna stick around, I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper into some of the nuances between this tool and how you would do it traditionally, some of the things that I've seen, maybe when I would use it, what settings I would use and so on. So if you wanna stick around, that's what we're gonna get into now. So the next thing about this we should understand is, at least from the initial playing around, it's not truly exactly the same as a fit point spline with those constraints added. So for example, if I were to just create a fit point spline between these two points and I add tangency, you'll notice that the curve is actually different. So I'm going to take the curve I just created and make it construction so we know exactly which one is which, but the same fit point spline, the same tangency condition, is giving me a different result. Now, part of this, I believe, comes from the fact that when this tool is building itself, it's actually applying the tangency to one side first. So if we try to replicate that with a fit point spline, say we come from here to here, and then we apply a tangency to one edge, and then we do coincident here. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that because it put it to the handle but we do a coincident from the end point, and I want this point here, so I'm gonna hold down the left mouse button, hit the sketch point, and then try to apply a tangency here. Notice that it gives me that same result we got the first time. So I'm not entirely sure why we get a different result, but it is important to note that those are different. It is not exactly the same thing as a fit point spline with a tangent constraint. Now you might be thinking, well, 
surely the one with the curvature constraint is exactly the same as well. So let's give that a shot. Let's go ahead and put it on here. We're going to use curvature continuity. This time is a little bit tricky because this one is now pointing past 90 degrees, so it's likely going to flip it. So what we need to do is adjust the handle first and then use the curvature continuity constraint. And once again, you can see that we are getting a different value. Now, the curvature and tangency constraints applied to this blend curve are more in line with what I would expect the tool to give us than when we do this with a fit point spline. So on the surface, it looks like a fit point spline, but the results are not the same. So then it brings me to my next point. How would I have done this before the blend curve tool? And would I still do it to this day if I have the blend curve tool now available? Well, the way that I would traditionally do this is I would take a spline, in this case, a control point spline, and I would add, let's say, three points here, and then I would come up and add three points here. I would use tangency between the spline and the surrounding curve. I would use collinear between the first three edges on this side, the first three edges on this side, and then I would use an equal constraint, making the three of these equal with each other on either side. And this is the way that I would blend these two curves together. Now it's very similar to what we have here. And if I had an additional spline point added in the middle, then I would be able to get it a little bit closer to this. But if we take a look at the curvature combs, we're gonna go ahead and turn that on. We'll turn it on for this one as well. When we look at the curvature combs, the end result is very similar. Now there are some nuances and some differences here, but the end result is very similar in what we see on the screen. Now the differences here are that in the blend curve, you can see that it's relatively straight, and then the radius of curvature gets pretty large, and then it comes back in. When we look at the version that I created with the control point spline, you can see it's still relatively straight, but instead of the radius of curvature on the curvature combs jumping back out to the right, it stays relatively consistent through the transition, and the same thing is true on the bottom. So if I was looking at this from, let's say, a purely manufacturing standpoint, this result here for me is a little bit better than this result here. Now it's not to say that either one is the perfect solution, but this is what I look at when I'm trying to figure out which method I would want to use. So at the heart of it, I think the tool is great, especially with the tangency constraint. It makes it extremely quick for us to create that curve between other curves. We have to also remember downstream if we're using this for things like a loft, that your guide curves must have the same continuity as whatever edge continuity you're trying to use. So for example, in a loft, if we're trying to do a tangency, then our curves need to have tangency, or if we're trying to do curvature continuity, they need to have that as well. And I'll show you that example here. Uh, let's go ahead and do this in a new sketch because this one's getting kind of busy here. So I'm just gonna start a new sketch. Again, it doesn't have to be 3D, but I'm gonna use curvature continuity between these edges. And note that you can do this between uh, multiple edges. You, you can kind of pick where you want it to go. And it can be a pretty quick tool, especially to get that initial curve in place. And then you can always right click and insert a spline point if you want some additional control. Now, the way that this, move, this works in a 3D sketch is you have to use the move copy tool to sort of move it around. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just use those top two. So again, if we're trying to do something like a loft between these two edges, and I use curvature continuity, and I want to align it to my surface, one thing that you can see here is that the result doesn't match this curve. The result is different for a couple of reasons. The end result is looking at the influence of just the surface, whereas the blend curve is looking at the influence of just the edge. So when we combine these two together, the curve is looking at just the tangency or curvature direction while the surface has to take into account everything around it. We can use these as guide curves to help drive the surface if we wish. And again, it's a quick way for us to put things like this together. It makes good sense to use this tool off of the edges of 3D surfaces because those curves are much more difficult for us to manually create. 
However, if you're doing it in 2D, I still see a lot of value in understanding the basics behind creating that in 2D yourself. So once again, if we take a look at this, we have our couple different methods. We've got the traditional method of doing this with either using tangency or curvature continuity with a fit point spline. We have the method that I prefer, which is using the control point spline, driving the collinear direction of those handles. That helps us get and maintain good curvature throughout the spline. And then we also have the blend curve tool, which is new, that allows us to quickly build those curves out in 3D as essentially fit point splines that we can further manipulate. If you have any questions on this, please let me know. If you wanna see more What's New content, let me know that as well. Currently, I don't plan to cover many of the What's New things in Fusion 360. A lot of them are updates and improvements. There are a lot in the CAM workspace, which I generally don't cover on this channel or, or haven't to this point yet. But if there's something specific that you find that you want more information on, please leave a comment and let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.